as a high-skilled or even a low-skilled professional with low CRS scores. And today I'm going to be presenting you with, um, as I said, my name is Aziz Olai Raju Shudu from, um, what they call it now, from Ontario, Canada. So um, today I want to actually talk about who this presentation is for. That's the very first thing we want to talk about. Who exactly are we trying to communicate with? We are trying to communicate with you if if you are a current international student in Canada, in the UK, in the US, or any other country struggling to actually become a permanent resident of Canada. Okay, thank you. Um, Ade Remy said, this is Ade B. Aisha from Nigeria. Thank you for joining. And also, we are also kind of communicating with you if you are a temporary foreign worker who is currently working with the Canadian or American company under the closed work permit and can't actually become a permanent resident easily. Now, if you are a visitor as well or a tourist who with six months duration and it is already fast approaching and you want to become a permanent resident of Canada, we're also talking to you. Or you have been rejected or refused a visa before, denied entry into Canada or even been banned in recent years or past times in Canada, UK, US or Australia. If you are a tech professional, thank you, Hime, for reaching out from Nigeria. This is also for you, a digital nomad, a manager, director, supervisor, business owner, self-employed, who is an English or even a French speaker. If you don't have your IELTS or if you have your CLP, your TCF, your TF Canada, or not even having any travel history at all, you are also going to be actually very, very needed in this conversation. If you're an American, a um, Caribbean, an Asian, an American, an Australian, if you're a doctor, a teacher, a lawyer, a tradesperson, a carpenter, a stylist, a barber, any one of you you are actually invited into this conversation. But before I actually talk further, thank you, Oladimiji, for actually for reaching us from Nigeria. You are presently in Canada on a visit. Good. This is for someone like you as well. Now, um, firstly, I want to talk about my case study. One of our case studies, Dr. Lawal. Dr. Lawal was one of a lecturer. He was a lecturer at Squire State University, and he actually came even with his BSc, he reached out to us. He said he has done his BSc, his MSc, and now even have a PhD, but he didn't know how to go about the PR process. So it doesn't matter if you have many degrees. If you don't know how to go about it, you need the right, you understand, PR step formula. And that is exactly what we were able to show him. And because of that, he was able to actually run on his provincial nominee program, which actually let him finally get selected through a province and going with his wife and two kids. So if you are an educated person like him, or you are not even educated, like many people would reach out to us that they don't, they just have a YX certificate. This is also for you. And I want to talk about the agenda, the overview of what we're going to be discussing today. Firstly, I've talked about my introduction. Two, we'll talk about the webinar purpose and the PR reasons. Why do you even need the PR in the first place? Factors affecting your CRS scores. We even explain what the CRS score is, how to calculate your CRS score, challenges with low CRS score, recent trends in the CRS cutoff scores, strategies to improve CRS scores, case studies and success stories, just like the one I just showed you, common law partnership unions. We'll talk about that, provincial nominee programs, express entry system and processes. We'll also talk about application timelines. We'll talk about estimates. We'll talk about additional resources you may also need to actually use to come to Canada. We'll talk about the additional resources, the offer and the bonuses, the main disclaimers with frequently asked questions, and we'll talk about the next steps and the follow-ups you need to do in order to get started with your PR process. Now, what's the webinar process or purpose? Firstly, our goal in this webinar is firstly to empower you as high-skilled or even low-skilled professionals facing challenges with low CRS scores in their pursuit of moving to Canada. Two so would also acknowledge the common concerns and misconceptions about the immigration process and highlight the issues and how you can even solve them. Lastly, we'll talk about the how to prove. I will provide you an, with an overview of key areas that serious immigrants can actually focus on to relocate easily to Canada as a permanent resident. But before I talk more, I would like to ask um, answer the question, why are we even bothered about express entry? Why are we bothered about PMPs? Why are we bothered about permanent residence visa? Why? It is because it gives you the ability to live and work anywhere in Canada. So for many people that I would always like to ask me that, okay, please, I want to come to Canada. I want to come to work. You are shortlisting yourself because all these things are already embedded in the permanent residence program. If you become a permanent resident, you'll be able to live and work anywhere with any employer, with two, three, four employers at the same time. You would also be able to access free universal healthcare for yourself, for your family, for your children, for your kids, for your wife, 
you'll be able to access social services, get life advantages from the government. And there are many of them, like unemployment benefits, maternity leave and sick leave, unemployment, disability um, benefits, family allowances, pension and old age survivor benefits. You would also have access to family sponsorship. In other words, you can reunite with your Canadian family members easily or even bring other family members with you. You would also have ex um, you would have expense paid education for your children. And many a times it's not even only for children because you have free primary, secondary, and if you know how to go about it, you can also get tertiary education freely without paying a dime because of your permanent residence visa. You would also get protected rights, rights for mobility for you to move anywhere, go anywhere around Canada, equality for you to be seen as someone that is equal to a Canadian, a duality of languages for your life, and properties. Here we speak English and French, but you can be able to use any other languages you want whatsoever, and even transit to Canadian citizenship. You understand? So you can actually, with your permanent residence after three years, you can have access to the Canadian passport, and that would allow you to actually visit 188 visa countries currently. So firstly, I would like to also tell you who am I? I'm Aziz Ola Shode. I have assisted more than 350 students and immigrants to relocate, to learn language, to um, prepare for IELTS, TEF Canada, TCF Canada examinations, and to also do everything that they are doing, like for international students who are currently studying in Canada or elsewhere, we also assist them as well. So first time traveler abroad. Actually, I was a first time traveler. I have not traveled to any European or American country before I came to Canada. So I was a successful Canadian, PR immigrant at the first attempt. I also was a French language teacher in Nigeria. I was a web developer for past companies that I've worked for. I was. I am currently a common law partner by relationship, and I actually bolded this because this is very, very important. Now, I was a data scientist by current profession because now I'm studying in the UK on, as a data scientist. I'm a travel educator. I educate people in Canada about how to work on their immigration. And I'm also a business owner in Ontario because I'm registered by the Ontario Business Registry to actually work in Canada as a self-employed. So that is why you should perhaps listen to me because I've actually gone through the process. I know how it is and I can actually be of assistance to you. Now, what's, uh, what's even the story about CRS calls? CRS is known as the comprehensive ranking system and it is a key component of the Canadian Express Entry System, which is the primary immigration pathway for economic immigrants. Now, note, it is the primary, but it is not the only. Do you understand? It is just the primary. The PMPs are other routes, and we'll still see other routes as we go through this process, how you can actually use to immigrate permanently to Canada. Now, CRS is a point-based system. It ranks candidates in the express entry. You understand? And it is ranking based on various factors. The factors are five in number, and I'm going to actually tell you, talk, talk to you about them now. But candidates receive invitations based on the CRS calls on a regular basis. Sometimes it can be two weeks. Sometimes we have seen it. It can be one week interval it can even have a stretch of maybe like a month period so it, it depends on that particular period that you're actually waiting to get your crs point now um, your invitation now the key crs component is number one the core human capital factors the age the level of education the language proficiency in english or french and the work experience secondly it is also the skills transferability factors the education language proficiency canadian work experience certificates of qualification in a trade and even additional points the third factor the value job offer in canada obtaining a provincial nominee nomination through pmp having a sibling in canada or poss possessing strong french language skills Four, it is the Canadian education or work experience program of a study in Canada and your Canadian work experience. Five, it is the spouse or common law partnership factors, language proficiency, education, and Canadian work experience. Some of these factors, I don't even want you to focus on it. I don't want you to even disturb yourself on it. And I'll give you my reasons in the subsequent um, slides. Now, the factors affecting your CRS course. Firstly, the education is a critical factor, a crucial one that actually contributes to the Canadian um, candidate overall score. Why? Because it looks at your academic qualifications and how you are going to be a contributor to the economic factor. And firstly, it, it will grant you or it will award you points based on the highest level of education completed by the candidate. Two, the highest points are typically awarded for a completed what, Canadian post-secondary degree. And that is why many people will go to study primary school and waste a lot of money to get their bachelor's, their master's, their doctorate, their postgraduate. Um, the um, certificate, but many a times it's not even necessary. Now, additional points may also be awarded if a candidate has completed a recognized program. Yes, definitely. 
in some cases, additional points may be awarded if you completed in a certain field, in a certain field that is in demand in Canada, and this is priceless. Many people, even in Canada, if you have a priceless in demand, you understand, program from Nigeria, you don't need to waste so much money, millions of naira, to actually study that same program in Canada. Now, educational credentials are needed to be obtained outside Canada for programs that you studied outside Canada, the educational credential assessment, in order to see the equivalence in the Canadian level. And the sixth thing is the skills transferable factors. They need to know that, okay, if you have this particular, maybe OND and HND, then you can actually combine those, you understand, certificates and get a higher CRS score based on that education and your language proficiency. Now, the next thing is the language proficiency. Just like we talked about the education, the language proficiency is another important factor. Either be the English or French, or even English and French. That means you can either take the, any of the four exams, either the IELTS, the CELPIP, the TEF Canada, or the TCF Canada, the Test de d'Evaluation de Français, or Test de Connaissance de Français for French. And you need the four skills, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Some people said that, okay, they were asking me one time that, can we use the one that they said that um, you can just use one test? You can just take one test. We do one test, like one time, te one time, one skill test. You can't use that for immigration. That is not allowed. So, either way, the speaking, listening, reading, and writing is needed for all the what all the immigration pathways. Now, before I talk more about what other factors we have, I want to talk. I want to talk about another case study. Rashida Yusuf, you may be asking me that. Okay, you have said the IS qualification, the IS education. Okay, people that have just like the instance of Dr. La Dr. Lawal that had PhD. But me, I don't have PhD. I don't have BSc. I don't have PBGD. I don't have PhD. I'm SC. I don't have MDD, HND, NCD, all those DDD. You don't shall have it. Basically, this is someone that didn't have it. She was my common law partner. And currently, she's in Canada. Do you understand why? Because she followed through a particular process, a process that doesn't really need you to have your NCE, your ND, your H, all those God damn it. Because during our own time, she wasn't even able to create an express entry profile because her CRS score was below 300. You understand? But she followed the process, a framework. She took advantage of our coaching and our visa leverage that we'll also be showing you today. And within a few weeks, she prepared and got her IELTS test, even though, again, it was not really necessary for her to take the IELTS. She was able to save herself from writing another jam, doing another NGMB or JPEP without any sure admission in Nigeria because she waited to actually get admission but wasn't able to get and she didn't even have funds to go abroad, to come to Canada to study through the International Student Health. In other words, she became the first person in her family to actually migrate to Canada, you understand, without knowing anyone in Canada, without studying in Canada, and now she's even studying in Ontario, tuition free getting grants from the government to easily study. So if you want to be someone like that, can I just even see you on the comment section? Say that, like, yes, you, you really want it. You really want it. Now, moving on, um, work experience is another factor in the CRS. Do you understand? It aims to attract candidates with a certain number of skills and certain number of experiences to contribute to the Canadian labor market. Now, note this, certain, this is not for everybody. Even if you can be a PhD holder and you can maybe study psychology or study one useless course, even though psychology is not useless, but you may study some other courses from your home country. If it is not in demand, you may just as well be wasting your time in Canada, um, trying to come to Canada. And you can actually be in any of these NOC codes, which they call the TR system now, either the zero, a or B, that is the tier one, tier two, or tier three. And you can get more points for three plus years and above. Do you understand? Like maximum points, if you have three plus years of experience, you understand, and above. And the point system are awarded based on the work experience, either be it continuous or non-continuous, even though we advise people to have continuous experience. And definitely, if you have a Canadian work experience, it can boost your points, but most times it is not even necessary. Now, the age is another factor. The lesser your age, the better your factor. But again, there's always a misconception here. The fact that you are 47 and more does not mean that you cannot actually migrate. Yes, you can have to, your CIS can get decreased based on just the age factor, but you can also increase your CIS factor or your CIS point on other factors. People from 18 and 35 always have maximum points of age. If you are 20 to 29, even better. If you are 18 to 44, that is the range that is favorable for economic immigration. But that does not mean, again, that if you are 40 plus, you are 50 plus, you are even 60 plus, it doesn't mean you cannot relocate. Just know how to go about it. 
is the major thing. Now, arranged employment, I won't talk so much on this because I always tell people, many a times you cannot arrange employment from your own country, let's just be frank, because even people in Canada are still struggling to get jobs. So if you are waiting on to get a job from your home country, you may be waiting for life. Do you understand? Because the hell am I here, the way it is structured, it is structured to favor the Canadians and people that already have work permits, either by the virtue of their spouse that came for study, you understand, and got the open work permit. So it doesn't really favor you. So, but it will give you a dead point if you have it. But if you are not willing to spend time, maybe three to six months to get the job, or even sometimes years to get the job after searching for it, or you are not willing to pay some scrupulous agent to, that would you understand, claim that they have a kind of work permit for you, and you understand, cut away with your millions of naira, I will not really tell you to focus much on the arranged employment. Now, adaptability, this is where it actually becomes interesting, because for all of our clients, we don't focus on all the factors for them. We don't focus on everything that the CRS has to offer. We just focus on some selected few. And the selected few that have actually marked out are just five in number. Any other team, you are wasting your time. It's just the truth. I may be, I'm being frank with you and I don't want to waste your time. The Canadian factors, you may not necessarily have it because I didn't have it myself. I didn't have a Canadian work experience. I didn't have relatives in Canada that can give me points. I didn't have arranged employment. I didn't have past study in Canada. I didn't have Canadian education. But what I had was foreign work experience, which I used. Education from Nigeria, which I used. Language proficiency, which I used. Proof of funds, which I used. And there are ways to go about it. Now, spouse or common law partner points, which I use. So those are the major things I'll focus on on this webinar. Now, moving on, I want to talk about the case study of Mr. Jiko. This was a very wise immigrant, even though he had less amount of points. Okay, you know, thank you. You said, yes, I want. That's good. Just focus on this webinar. Now, even though he had less amount of points in the IELTS, because people feel that you need to have... <laughs> like a lot of points, you need to have it for zero because yes, we do talk about it too, that there's a formula which we'll still talk about for your IELTS. But this guy didn't have the IELTS 8.0 points. He, didn't, he was working with the PhDN in Nigeria. He studied in Kwara State and in Kwara State um, University. He also did his IELTS twice, you understand? He had a low CRS score before he found out about some other ways, easy ways to actually get his immigration. And after that, within the right time, he was able to be in the 430, point, 430, you understand, CRS points. He got selected through the Manitoba PMP because definitely he had someone that could actually run it for him. And he was able to quickly actually come here with that, you understand, with that Manitoba PMP, you understand, nomination without getting a job in Canada. But now he's now in Canada with his wife and his child and he's comfortable, comfortable after he landed and when he told us we were so happy that with our consultations, our IELTS prep and everything, he was able to come to Canada. So if you want to be like him, listen up. Now, how do you calculate your CRS score? There's always a website that people always go and have actually clicked it on it. If you even write it on the web, on what they call it, on Google, just write it, um, CRS tool, CRS tool. It will bring out this particular thing and you'll be able to see how to actually, you understand, evaluate or access your Canadian CRS points. And many people, the problem that they actually face is that you just go directly to this tool, you understand, without having a lot of qualifications, you would, without having a lot of, you understand, a lot of factors that would benefit you. So many a times when people check it, they see that they are not even qualified and they become, you understand, they become discouraged. But I always tell people, there's a pre-evaluation process which we we'll talk about that will take you through how to go about this with the CRS tool and with all other tools to check if you are eligible for either the Express Entry, the PMP, or even the Quebec Skilled Worker Program. So this tool would help you check based on, you understand, your factors, the Express Entry programs you are qualified for, whether it be if you are in Canada or outside Canada, and how you can actually boost your CRS scores. Now, challenges with low CRS scores that I've actually seen over the years when it comes to this, and which me I also struggled with is, Number one, low or no IELTS and TEF Canada scores, which is a major issue. A major issue, people always think, yes, if you have a low CRS, you cannot come to Canada. If you have a low IELTS, you can't come to Canada. Low TEF Canada, you can't come to Canada. Misconceptions, very major misconceptions. Lack of higher educational credentials that, okay, I just have my work and they say I cannot come to Canada, so I want to go for study. If you have the money for study, no problem. If you have the time to wait for work permit, no problem. If you want to come to Canada and visit, just stop and waste away your money, no problem. But if you want to stay here permanently, limited chances of invitation is under issue. 
competitive nature of draws, X percent triple profile expiry, changing eligibility criteria, limited options for provincial nominee prog nominations, difficulty in obtaining a job offer, impact on settlement funds, and other visa options like study or visit. So let's move on. The recent trends that we have seen in the CRS cutoff scores doesn't really require you to have the highest CRS score ever. It doesn't really require you. And many people that follow the trend, you know that there are some categories that they have been focusing on. The French language proficiency, healthcare occupations, science, science technology, engineering and mathematics occupation, trade occupations. They just even did one transport occupation where they selected some people and agriculture and agri-food occupations. Now, note all these occupations. Some of them are general, some of them are provincial based, and some of them are category based. Now, moving on, we also have the uh, what they call it now we also have the strategies you can use to overcome the low crs scores what are the strategies basically that you need to know firstly you need to improve your language proficiency either be it english or french if you don't want to increase you need to enhance your educational credentials to actually improve it whether getting a certificate a degree or diploma and stuff additional work experience you need to add it up and it doesn't really necessarily need you to wait years before you get many of these things there are ways you go about it which we'll talk about now explore the pmp routes which a lot of people don't even know about some that even know about it they are they don't know how to actually position themselves to get the nominations seek a job offer which is daunting for many people or consult with a professional someone that knows what he's doing and can actually guide you and guide you through the process now there's something we call the 7877 formula that means in listening you have to have 8.0 for ielts in reading writing and speaking 7.0 but there are ways to go about it even without this point system that would actually still make you come to canada without even having the perfect 8.0 but i want to talk about mr patrick this is someone that actually started with us he started learning the TEF canada and um, the french and stuff but he was frustrated, his wife was frustrated. They quarreled a lot because of their immigration. They had issues. Thank God they are still together. But after some time, they got to know how to go about it without necessarily wasting so much of time or so much of money. And with that, they were able to get invited by two provinces, Manitoba and Saskatchewan. And as they say, the rest is history. They were able to do it with 450 CRS points. I've told you people that actually came to Canada without CRS, without even being able to create a profile. Some created a profile, but they didn't have 500 points, you understand, or more. And some actually did it the wise way and would actually show you how you two can actually do that. Yes, you can invite someone to join this webinar. Just give them the link and they will join. Now, for the education and certification, recognize credentials that you can use to actually boost your points. If you are an NDO that you are a hot kick, if you are an MCO that another hot kick, HNDO that another hot kick, depending on the school you study and the program you studied, most times NCE are qualified as a bachelor's or a three-year program. Depending on what you studied, ND and HND is even more than BSc. Do you understand? Master's definitely is more than BSc. Doctorate is even better. But if you don't have any of this, there are some professional qualifications you can get. Yes, how can I invite someone? Give that person this link that is on the you understand um, screen and the person can actually join. Oh, okay. I was talking about the professional licenses you can have. If you have agriculture-based fields, if, for instance, it's even, you understand, the so-called Ishel word that they always talk about, even though you cannot access it through ways, there are still ways you can use those Ishel words, which we'll still talk about. But agriculture-based fields, you can use their credentials. Architecture, CIMA, if, if you are maybe, for instance, in accounting or in anything, you can use the CIMA. Computer science or technology-related field, I used some of this to actually get selected for immigration. And you two can actually use it. CPA, dentistry, education-related fields, engineering, finance, law, medical, medicine, nursing, social work, veterinary medicine. These are some of the fields you can actually use to actually get a hopper hand than someone that doesn't have these qualifications. And if you are in any of these skills, if you have gathered, some people always ask me, I want to come to Canada and I want to make sure I get a job within some few certain time I come to Canada, how can I improve my, you understand, eligibility for jobs? If you want to improve your eligibility, start getting some of these skills. Plumbing, tailoring, barbie. In fact, many people, we kind of apply to series of PMP programs. We apply for someone in tailoring in one particular program, Saskatchewan, 
province. Another one we use is tech skill to apply for another province, Ontario. Another one we use, you understand, it's trade skills, it's transport occupation skills to apply for another. If you don't have same, some of these skills, you may not be able to apply. So plumbing, tailoring, there are 30 different skills here, which I will not may, majorly have time to go through. But you can actually gather some skills. Okay, someone said, ah, you said earlier before time. Thought, okay, you started earlier before time. Thought you said 5.30. Well, there was a miscommunication in the coming, in the, you understand, messages we sent out, but it was five. If you checked the website, you understand, the event bright, it showed five o'clock, not 5.30. Sorry for that. Now, Babin, meal, right, cooks, chefs, air stylists, carpentry, electricians, spa services, mechanics, glaciers, welders, cleaners, painters, decorators, truck drivers. In fact, there are some people that are in Canada currently as a visitor, and they're already learning trucks. And with that, they will use it to get their work, their permanent residence or their work permits, depending on the one they choose. You can also have some of these skills and leverage them. Even though you're a doctor, you can try drive truck and even get paid more. You understand? Now, home support workers, home child care providers, food beverage servers, all these skills, you can actually use them. Use them. Now, exploring the provincial nominee program route. Many people don't know that different provinces have different programs that you can actually apply to to get selected. And I would actually go through some of them now. Now, Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, New Brunswick, Nova, Newfoundland, Northwest Territories, they are more than this. We have over 80 different PMP programs, but I focus on the ones that we, for instance, we actually focus on the one that is either based on express entry, entrepreneur based, or business based, or human capital priorities based, Quebec skilled worker program based, you understand, or international skilled worker occupations in demand. Now, these are some of the jobs that are either aligned with express entry, that doesn't require you to get a job in Canada, that doesn't require you to have Canadian work experience, that doesn't require you to even study in Canada, but you can actually have. You understand recognized qualifications from back home that you could use or recognized businesses from back home that you could use so just go through them this is a recorded webinar so you can always go through some of this at a later time now the immigration process i want to talk about it because many people always ask me what is even the process there are 15 different stages of the express entry and pmp i won't really have time to go through them but the major thing i want to tell you are just two well, just three. One, we have the general express entry stream, the one that many people always focus on, which is really going to stress you out because you cannot, especially if you're not in Canada or you are not a genius, you may not be able to qualify for it. But the PMP programs are something you can qualify for, and the category based round draws are things you can qualify for. And if you are selective, Ontario, Quebec, Alberta, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, British Columbia are very good provinces that you can actually easily get selected, which will go through. So these 15 steps, you would go through them for anybody that wants to go through them at a later time. Now, the key documents. People will ask, what are the key documents and requirements? International passport. First, if you don't have international passport, we can't even take you serious that you want to travel because that shows that you are not serious. Passport photographs, you need it. Proof of funds, language test scores. Proof of funds are based on your family structure. So just click on it, Canada Proof of Funds, put it on Google, and you'll be able to see the proof of funds based on your kind of family structure. The Educational Credential Assessment, in here that I talked about, Provincial Nominee Program, optional if you have, best. Marriage certificates, child custody letters, divorce letters if you have, offer letter from a Canadian employer, optional. For people that are not in Canada, it may be difficult for you to get that. Your personal reference code, which you get after you apply for Express Entry Profile, Express Entry, or skilled worker profile number, the job seeker validation code, the medical report, birth certificate, police certificate, criminal rep report, and letter of references. There are still more documents, but these are the major ones that we'll talk about. Now, another case study for Mrs. Abie, you are. This is someone that she followed us for two years before she thought that, okay, these people are not scam. Let me try these people. After a friend that actually worked with us even got selected by a better. And at the end of the day, because of a lack of belief, she actually had to pay double for our French program, which later got her a home Manitoba immigration, you understand, nomination. So um, some people always ask me the PMP pathways. What are even the PMP pathways apart from express entry? One, we have the Atlantic immigration. This is not even a pilot program anymore. It's already a full program on its own, and you can actually benefit from it. And here I also told you the average of months you can use to process them and the average cost based on the Naira and the USD. You understand? So you can go through them at your leisure time. Canada is very scarce in Canada. Caregivers, for people that 
are caregivers right now, you know that January 1st, there's going to be a selection of caregivers and you can actually get selected as a caregiver if you want to waste your time to actually wait 22 to 36 months for that. But if you don't want to waste your time, <laughs> there are other skilled worker category-based jobs you can use. Provincial nominee programs, self-employed persons, Quebec's business class, skilled workers, federal, skilled trades, federal, skilled workers, Quebec, startup visas, family sponsorship, and refugee or humanitarian. Now, additional resources you can actually also have access to at any time. You understand? It's go to through the cicnews.com, cic.gc.ca, canada.ca. If you want to go through the, the provincial nominee programs, you can go through alberta.ca, welcomebc.ca, immigrate, manitoba.com, welcome mb.ca, gov.nl.ca, quebec.ca, immigrantnwt.ca, novascotiaimmigration.com, ontario.ca, preservedwaterland.ca, saskatchewan.ca, yukon.ca. I think we'll send this to the comment section so that you can have access to them. Now, that brings me to the last thing. Many of you may actually work on it yourself. You can do it through the DIY process, which is very good. But when I was actually creating this presentation, I wanted to actually be involved, you understand? So I took the last option that, okay, let me have to help those who want to actually seek help, those who really want that extra efforts, that extra guidance from us. And as a result of that, we we created the Canada PR system, which is not for everybody. If you're not someone that wants to pay someone to actually get this done for you, no problem. There is no fight. You understand? You can do it yourself with all the information I actually shared now. But if you want to get access to many of the things that we are going to provide you with a Canadian PR system, then actually listen up to this. Now, this is a step-by-step -step package for migrating to Canada permanently, at once, without wasting time, easily without wasting money on school, millions, tens of millions of naira, without wasting time on work, on visits, without wasting time trying to gather travel experience from other places, without, even if you have had past rejections, if without even wasting time for refugee or asylum seeking. And I want to tell you people now, this is not a study permit route. This is not a work permit package. This is not a visitor visa package. It is not a refugee or asylum package. It is what for permanent residence, for someone that wants to come here with or without his family and stay here permanently. And the charge of that for the Canadian PR system is 6999 USD. Yeah, 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 no problem. See, there's no fight in this thing. If you cannot, I again, pay someone to get this done for you. There's no, see, the, with the level of common business and with things like this, sometimes it pays for people to do it themselves. I did it myself, I didn't pay anybody. So you too, you can do it yourself. Do you understand? If it works for you, no problem. But for people that want to actually use the leverage of what we do and what our immigration partners do, then you can sign up for this. Now, major disclaimers, because again, I always like to talk about this. Is this a book or a course? It is more than that, it is not a book. We are partnered, as I said, with some third parties so that we can handle all your language learning, your test preparation, your career development, your business mentorship, and immigration processes for you from start to finish. We have our immigration lawyer working with us, our licensed representative. Me, I'm not licensed, I do tell, tell people. I'm not an immigration lawyer. I'm not a business developer. But we have partnered with people, even up to realtors. Oh, we didn't mention that yet. We have partnered with even realtors that can easily help you get accommodations, even though that's another charge on its own. But we have people that can actually assist you with that. Now, people always, always ask me, do you have any office in Nigeria or even in Pakistan? I think some people always ask in Pakistan. We are fully based in Canada. We have no offices anywhere else. So if you are not trusting us on that, so no problem. Are you late? You understand? Don't worry. Don't even stress and say, okay, that kind of thing. I cannot work with you because you are not in Nigeria. No problem. Life is not hard. You understand? You can do the DIY process if it works for you. No problem. What is AOS abroad? AOS, we are not consultants. We are not lawyers. We are not even, we don't even consider ourselves as travel agents. But we self-identify as a language school. And as a language school, according to Canada, we can actually, you understand, provide courses, even though this is more than a course in language instructions. And we have courses for IELTS, for TEF Canada, and the rest of them. You understand? We can also help you to actually 
work on your training courses for career and educational opportunities. But we go beyond that with the what partnerships we have with our immigration partners. Where are we set to, or what is our website? Our website is awasabroad.com, and we are currently in 76 Vesna Crescent, Brampton, Ontario, Canada. If you want to also come visit us, no problem. Book an appointment, and you can actually come to see us. Now, the bonuses for many people that want to go through this, um, what they call the Canada PR process, we said we have the common law union partnership advantage. If you are that kind of person that wants help with the entire immigration process, with even the eligibility requirements we talk about, like IELTS, like TEF Canada, and the travel documentations, this is golden. This is very much golden. You can actually get assisted with it, whereby you will just provide the cash and there are some common law partners, partners that will, you understand, partner with you and get all the credentials on your behalf, you understand, and you just align with them and they get you the visa without any issues. Now, if you want immigration application packages, like we have mentioned here, there are some of our premium packages that are even more than it. But if you sign up with this Canada PR package, even though this is more than it, you will just pay that seven USD and you will have the entire travel package that would actually benefit you, yourself and your families. Now, you would also have access to not only us, but our consultant, our immigration lawyer that will talk to you one on one. Normally, these people, if you even want to talk to them, normally you book a consultation, you will get, you will pay them, you understand, on a, a minute basis. But because you work with us, you will be able to talk with them, you will be able to have access with them freely. For those who actually pay for this package, within the next three days, we will have these extra bonuses. Now, I want to actually talk about this case study of Mr. Yemi, a very wise man. This is someone that he wanted to come to Canada. We started working on, in fact, work permit for him, but we weren't able to get a job because, yes, he was not in Canada. And we actually told him, why don't you go through the visitor visa? You understand? And come in as a tourist. And after you land in as a tourist, we will now actually get you the PR process. For many people that are in that kind of, scenario now within the um visitor visa timeline the six months you can actually get your pr process done if you have actually started you understand to work on it quickly or you can even get your visa extended through the visitor record and actually stay back and get your pr process if you are a visitor and you want that kind of thing um reach out to us this is someone that has been rejected in the us his b1 visa was rejected b2 visa was rejected twice before he actually got his canadian visitor visa within just a month and now he's going to be actually coming to And that takes us out to our frequently asked questions. So people ask, ask us, is this a sponsorship visa? No, we don't do job sponsorship. We don't give loans. We don't do human trafficking because some people ask for job sponsorship, but they don't know that they are being trafficked. We don't actually do pay after service. Don't even ask us for that because we're not respond to you. And this is not an illegal immigration pathway. We are doing things that are genuine. Can I apply as we are 45 or for 56 old? Yes, age is not a barrier. It is a major factor, but it's not a barrier if you actually have the right eligibility criteria and required documentation. Is this for me and my family? Yes, for those that pay within the three days, instead of paying an additional for your family, you can actually do it if you are single or if you are a single parent, if you are a couple, if you are a family with kids, you can, even though you have seven kids, no issues. How long does it take? It can actually take five to six months on an average, if you are fast with it, you don't delay your payments and everything goes on smooth. It's going to take less than that. It's going to take more than that. Now, can I recommend someone? Yes, you can recommend. And even through our clarity calls that we have talked about earlier, you can recommend. I even get some, you understand, referral bonuses based on your recommendation. Can I apply without my degree? Yes, when your partner has a degree. You understand? Because that's what exactly my common law partner did. I, she didn't have what? I had, and we use that as a leverage. Is my 4.5 in IELTS listening okay? 
Yes, with the right approach, information and network, it may not be okay if you are the only one. It may not be okay if you don't know how to go about it. Is this real or scam? Sisters and brothers, judge that for yourself. And take your time to do research. Know about us. If I'm lying, you will know. You understand? If I'm a froster, you will know. There's 